to another book talk. I feel like I've been doing a lot more of these lately, but some of it's been because guys, I've read so many good books just from the beginning of this year. Like I've been on like a book reading high, which hasn't happened in a while. But guys say we're gonna be talking about the book then. They can send me back into a book slump because I'm reading another book right now and I cannot get into it. But that book is The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. Guys, oh my gosh, this book. I cannot even begin to explain how much I enjoyed this book. I didn't think I was going to Okay, I should say I didn't think. I was a little hesitant going into it because I think I've read a book by this author before and I can't remember my opinions of it. I think it was just like one of those books where I thought was okay. Like I didn't hate it, but I didn't like love it, love it. Guys, I love this book. It definitely was not what I thought it was gonna be. I kind of knew it. I kind of knew it had like aspects of time travel. I just didn't know how that worked into the plot. But guys, I loved it so much so much. It was so good. So let's kind of talk about this book a little bit. So start off the back. The book starts with June at her grandmother's funeral and we start to kind of get a little of a glimpse of okay what has been going on. We see June getting like a glimpse of this, this shadow man in the church window and then she sees him at night behind the main door in her house. And so I really thought this was gonna be more of a mystery but guys I gotta admit I kind of knew what was gonna take place just purely guessing. So we kind of hear that there's like this kind of like let's call a curse that all the women in her family have somehow where they just start seeing these figments of these places and seriously their minds start going because of it and so it was really cool reading this um so let's kind of like just like jump let's just jump forward because if you've read this book I don't I feel like I probably don't need to explain it too much to you so June eventually goes through the door because she gets the note which we'll talk about later and she is transported into the 1950s we start to find out that in the 1950s June had this whole life like she had a husband she had a child but she don't remember it because it's actually a past her that came through so June goes through the door and then the author builds tension when we find out she can only go through the door three times so June had kind of also at this point created a loophole where her past self went through the door so it was kind of as if the previous time never counted anyway so June can only go through the door one time so this is kind of where it kind of tripped me up a little bit I really thought this was gonna be a back and forth book like her of the present and then the past so when she went through the doors of the 1950s, I really did think she was going to go back into the present time, like 2023. And it was going to be more like, uh, where were she? She was missing, blah, 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 blah. But she stayed in the 1950s the entire time. And I get why the author did, because like I said, there was that tension of she can only go through the door one other time. But there was part of me of like, I want to know what happens in the present time. I know you could probably assume what happens, like she goes missing, people are looking for her, people are worried for her, blah, 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 blah. But I really wish we could have maybe seen seen that more even if it was from the perspective of the character Birdie going all the way to the end where June remarries her husband I was a little confused on that because especially when she kind of one she knew what happened in the future and I don't know if that was just her way of like reconciling with herself what might have happened not knowing but she was like oh Birdie will die in three years what would have been 2023 or like Mason ends up dating and marrying an intern at the flower farm and part was like how does she know this but I'm gonna kind of get into my theory that in a second I kind of wish we did have a perspective of Birdie at the very end like this was what life was like once June stayed in 1950. I don't know maybe I'm the only one who felt like that it just it wasn't because the book felt incomplete it was just me as a reader wanted to know more but I was a little confused at the ending let me let me find it so I can accurately quote it so it kind of goes into at the end it kind of goes in and talks about how June broke the cycle so Annie will never have to experience the door and everything else even though my point is okay if your mind deteriorates why did you just say just don't go through the door like this is what it is this is what's happening just don't go through that door I don't know but I guess it might be kind of annoying having to live with these weird images all day but it sounds like once they cross through the door the first time that's when it starts so like I said why go through the door so the very last part of the book says and then I spoke my vows into the summer wind that I love him forever that I would always always come back that no matter what I would find him okay so here here is my thing. Is this just a thing like, okay, you know what? She left and then she came back and this is just her recounting it. Like, hey, I will always come back to you. Or is this a thing? 
thing because this is where time travel just messes with my mind and I never can understand it. That's one thing with this book I realized like I can't if I'm going to sit here and try to make sense of how this is working out I'm going to hate this book. So I kind of just started taking it as face value and just going with it. But okay so here is my thing. So June broke the cycle so her daughter won't see the door but technically her mother hasn't been born yet. So in a way June technically hasn't been born yet. So my question is because her mother is still going to go back in 1912 marry Nathaniel have Jude so is this going to be something like just a never ending cycle so therefore if this is a never ending cycle did she really break the cycle I don't know this is where just time travel messes with my mind so in a way is it technically she's going to constantly be reliving this event in a way does Jude never really fully die even though it says she dies in the 80s does she really fully ever die if then technically she's reborn again I do not understand this and like I said this is probably me overthinking it so much I recommend this book to a friend I even told her like if you're gonna sit there and try to figure out how this works you're not gonna like the book but one thing it did kind of when I first started reading was how the author was very descriptive and the writing was so beautiful but I found the descriptiveness was kind of making it hard for me to read because I was able to get the plot and I was hearing a lot of descriptiveness if that makes sense like I think it's great when authors go really dive into telling you what the world looks like but at some point it's like I'm just trying to figure out what this plot is but guys I loved love 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 this book like the premise was interesting with the doors and the time travel like I said I really did think it was gonna be more back and forth than it was I guess as a reader perspective so she stays in the 1950s which is totally fine and we kind of start to see her piece it together I kind of knew she was the one that killed Nathaniel like to me that was just it was very obvious right off the bat but it didn't take away from the plot I've knowing that I feel like the author's main point was not the mystery I think that was there to include a very intriguing aspect but I don't think that was the author's main point so therefore I think that's why it was very easily guessable. I wish it just as a reader and not so much a fault from the authors I wish we would have saw more scenes with her name in like not because the author failed to do it even though I get it like it was kind of a sense where June and him had to re-fall in love. I just wish we would have gotten more scenes of something like that because it was kind of like June got her memories back and suddenly now they're in love again and like I get it. I get it. We technically didn't need any extra scenes with them in it but as a reader I really would have loved the extra scenes because I was shipping this so hard like this was one of those nice ships where you're like you know this ship has sailed you just gotta wait for it a little bit but I was loving their characters and their relationship guys it was so good I read this book in three days I kid you not I would get home from work and just read and then Saturdays I just read housework and the responsibilities just went out the window and I just read this book so my only complaint about this book I would say is that the ending happened way too quick we find out about what happened to Nathaniel June almost gets arrested but then turns out she reveals like what happened so they drop basically what was going on and then she marries Eamon and then we call it a day. I felt like there should have been like at least a good 50 more pages to this book especially the ending because like it happened and then I was like oh now she's remarrying him. And I really wish we would have got a little bit more into the ending because I felt like for a good portion of the book it was kind of very like they have a secret but they won't tell June and then suddenly we find out what the secret is and then book end. It's I really wish there was a little bit more there but again like I said it's not like that big of a deal because the author still fulfilled the purpose of telling the story and doing it well. Yeah I love the story. I wonder if June ever like ever told Amen about like hey you know when I was on the other side of the door I kind of got glimpses and whispers of you. I don't know that's I would do that if I was her but I don't know but guys it was such a good book. I loved it so so much. I love the writing like I felt like I could just easily visualize it. I kind of want to run away to the mountains for a little bit and just chill and live my best life because that is the vibe this book gave me. I love the small town feel. I just I love this book so much. I kind of wish there was a second book even though there's no way there could really be a second book. I wish there was a second book because I was not ready to say goodbye to this book whatsoever. It definitely sent me into a book slump. Like I said guys I'm reading a book right now and I just can't get into it because all I do is just keep thinking about this book. I actually have a playlist it's just songs I've been listening to that remind remind me of the story but guys it was just so well written it was really interesting about like I said the time travel aspects and the mystery about her mother I like the flower farm like I really like that idea of the flower I love like the farmhouse that they all kind of lived in that she kind of knew in the present but now she's seeing in the past it was just really interesting that way what I don't get 
bit is so when she was in 1950 she got almost visions of the future of her life with Mason so I'm assuming and I'm, I think I'm right with this but I could be wrong future June's memories started to come to what was past June's memories I have a feeling before she walked through the door the first time into 1950s this was her future self not her past self that then went back into the future I feel like I'm not making any sense here I have a feeling she was with Mason and so those were her memories but they started to come back to June 35 year old June because technically 35 year old June had already lived it if that makes any sense like I guess I really did think there was gonna be more back and forth with this book and there wasn't and I get why the author did that but it was so interesting at first she first crossed over and Eamon's like hey, you need to leave you shouldn't be here and then you find out it's because of the murder which that was also interesting but I love this book guys that's uh, pretty much all I have to say about it but it was so good I just I just want like maybe just like a rom-com maybe not a rom-com just like a normal romance book about these characters it doesn't nothing has to big happen it could just be about their life I that's what I want that I just want a normal book just talking about their life and I don't care if there's no crazy plot to it I just want to read about these characters again anyways guys that was a really quick book discussion and thank you for watching I'll see you next time bye